Hey, hey, thanks for tuning in to the Just Janice podcast. I am your host, Janice, and we know that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So in this joy-filled podcast, you're going to hear real-life stories from other believers. We're going to talk about the kingdom. We're going to magnify Jesus, and it's going to be awesome. So thanks for tuning in, and here we go. Hey, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Just Janice. I'm so excited for today's episode because I just have a word burning in my heart. And ever since I started this podcast a few years ago, it's crazy. It's almost been a few years now. I had told the Lord I will only get on and record when I feel like you have given me something to say. I never want to um, just have this platform just as a platform to just talk or whatever and just get on just to share for the sake of sharing. I only want to share when I really feel like God has something for me to communicate. And otherwise, I'd rather just not record because it would be a waste of your time and a waste of mine. And so I just got home a little bit ago from a stirred up event that I did in Portage, Michigan, which was an incredible event. It was just an awesome night of worship and getting in the word and ministry, being able to pray uh, with and for some ladies. And so always love those nights and I am such an extrovert. So I get, I mean, it's like 1030 at night right now and I am completely wound up because, or stirred up, uh, because that is what happens when you're an extrovert. You get around people and then you get energized and you're like, ah. So anyways, I was, I was, as I was coming home though, I was just really just seeking the Lord and in worship. And I had a song on that's called Abba by Eddie James. And I encourage you to look that song up after you listen to this episode because it is a powerful anointed song. And I had heard it for the first time a few months ago at a ramp event that I went to actually in December that I went to down in Tennessee. And um, ramp is a ministry that's down there. It's um, led by Karen Wheaton. I encourage you to follow her. If you don't know who she is, she is an incredible woman of God, um, has just been like of kind of like a virtual spiritual mom to me, just enjoy her teachings, love listening to her, just her passion for the word of God and for his presence is, is unique and admirable. And I just really, really, truly respect her as a minister. And so anyway, um, at this event that I went to down in Tennessee in December, Eddie James had sang this song and God has just taken me through a journey personally over the last few years of really discovering who he is as father. Um, For me personally, I have never really um, struggled to understand God um, in in the form of Jesus, you know, my Savior and my friend and and that aspect of God. And then the Holy Spirit, my counselor, my advocate, the one who guides me, um, all of those things. But God is the Father, honestly, is an aspect of God that I don't know that I really understood, and I'm and I'm not even saying I fully understand God now because that will never happen this side of eternity. But just part, of, just an aspect of God and and who He is that I I kind of ignored. Honestly, I, I didn't realize I did that. I didn't do it intentionally. But a few years ago, the Lord just really took me through a journey of discovering who He is as the Father, and He really used the parable of the prodigal to to reveal that aspect of who he is. And so I, there's so many things that I want to hit on in this episode, but I encourage you to look that up, the parable of the prodigal. And it talks about how his wayward son, how his son had taken his inheritance and he had left home, squandered it on wayward living and just, just stupid living. Um, That's the JRV, the Janice Regal version, stupid living. And, you know, a lot of times we we ourselves do that. Like we go about our life. We do what we want to do with our lives. And we, like the prodigal, he was ready to come home. And he was like, I'll just be his, I'll just be a hired servant for my father. I don't deserve to to step back into sonship. And so he returns back home with that mindset of like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to step back into that place of sonship. But if I could at least be a servant to my father, it would be better than where I'm living now. And I think a lot of us have that mentality too, where we're like, I've, I've strayed too far. I've done too much wrong. I've sinned too much. I'm too dirty to come back to God. And I've gone too far. Like I've, I've, there's too much distance between us. And so if I go back, I'm going to be like a beggar or like a servant. And, and just the beauty of that parable is that when the son comes home, the father greets him. 
he kisses him, he holds him, he, he puts his best robe on him. And I thought about that even recently when I was reading that parable, I'm like, he didn't tell him go inside and get cleaned up before I put my robe on you. He put his best robe on him, his best sandals, his signet ring, which signified authority and and status. And then he told the servants, go kill the fatted calf. And they had a celebration and a party. And it was just a celebration of his, his return home. And, and he didn't sit him down and lecture him and scold him. He, he welcomed him with open arms. And I think a lot of times God, the father is viewed in such an incorrect way. And when we really get into the word and we see who he really is as father, we can have a more accurate understanding of who he is. And even John 3, 16, I mean, that is the most famous verse in the Bible. I mean, most people know it, even if you're not a Christian, that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. And we think about the sacrifice that Jesus gave and the word says that he willingly endured the cross. And he went through that. He sacrificed his life for us to reconcile us to the father. And he laid down his life. It wasn't taken from him. He laid it down willingly. And we look at Jesus and we're like, wow, what an incredible savior and incredible friend. And he is all of those things. But we forget that he was sent by the father. He was sent by the father because of his great love for us. And the word I'm going to read, um, I'm going to read a couple passages in Psalms because I have my my Bible flipped open here. And then I want to um, read some scriptures in the New Testament. But I love these scriptures because I was just thinking about just how beautiful the word of God is, that it is living and it is active. And I'm in Psalms 119. There's a few scriptures I want to read about his word. It says, the entrance of your words give light. And then it says, direct my steps according to your word. And then it says, your word is very pure. And then it says, revive me according to your word. And then it says, the entirety of your word is truth. And so I am just so thankful that we have access in America. And I know that I have people that tune in that aren't from America, but I am so thankful. And I never want to take that for granted. The beautiful privilege it is to be able to have access to the word of God. It is not at this point, (laughs) it is not um, illegal to own the word of God. And I think we take it for granted. And I am praying um, many times I've prayed. I I mean, I'm not saying I pray this constantly, but I have prayed it so many times. God, let me not take that for granted. God, let me devour your word. Let me understand your word. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation as I dive into your word. And, and I love the scripture that says your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And that is just what I want to do to be constantly hiding his word in my heart, to be meditating on his truth and on his word, because it is a firm foundation beneath my feet. And I just love the word of God. And so I pray for you. If you maybe don't even own a Bible, seriously, reach out to me. I will buy you a Bible personally. If you have a Bible and you just have never really delved into it, I encourage you to start in the New Testament, start in the book of John, read through the gospel books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, For me, when I became a Christian, I really read through the New Testament several times through, like, I can't even tell you, I would read all the way from um, Matthew to Revelations and I'd start over and just read through so many times and actually it was just last year was the first time I had ever read the Bible in its entirety. Now if I um, actually sat down and calculated I probably had read most of the Bible just not straight through like I did last year. But anyway his word is just it is it's living and active like I already said and it is God breathed God inspired and the word says that it's useful for teaching or rebuking correcting and training in righteousness that the worker of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work and so it equips us it trains us it transforms our mind um and it says that in Romans that we're transformed by the renewing of our minds and we're renewed by reading the word of God because it is our fixed point of reference it's truth and so we adapt our lives to the word of God versus us trying to adapt the word of God to fit our lives because that doesn't work. So anyway, as I was driving home tonight, I was just really thinking as I was listening to the song Abba and um, I actually want to read you guys the definition of Abba. So I actually have this hanging in my living room. I ordered this off Etsy. So I'm walking up to my living room right now. So it's Aramaic and it means father, Papa, God is father. And it says, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you, used by Jesus to address God in a father-son relation of personal intimacy, a beautiful reference to a father who loves his children unconditionally. And so I'm just praying even just through this podcast, honestly, the biggest thing that I would love for you to take away 
from this episode is a revelation of the love of the Father. And so as I'm reading in 1 Corinthians here, I'm going to read here in a second. As I was driving home and I was listening to the song Abba, I was just thinking about how much he loves me. And as I heard that song at the ramp last year, I mean, I fell on my face before the Lord and I was just weeping at the reality of his love for me. And there's so much in scripture about his love that he loves us with a lavish love, that his banner over us is love, that there's nothing in all of creation that can separate us from his love, that it's unchanging, that we can't even measure it. And it just so much. And so I'm going to be reading in 1 Corinthians 13 here, and then I'll share with you kind of what God was speaking to me on, on my car ride home. Um, this is in 13, and then I'm going to read 4 until, hmm, um, I'm going to read through like 8. It says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. I'm going to stop there. It's the beginning of verse eight. So as I was driving home, um, I actually, it was like on the bridge of the song, this giant deer, which I live in rural Michigan. And it seriously, like, it's just, you just know when it's nighttime to drive a little slower because there's constantly deer or varmint running out into the road. And so um, this giant deer is coming at me and I slow down because I wasn't driving Well, I was driving like 55, so I was driving the speed limit, but I'm like, I probably need to slow down a little more. This giant deer is coming at me, and I had enough space, thankfully I saw it in time, to slow down, and it's going across the road as the bridge of the song is playing, and and it says, Abba Father protects me. And I just thought about my own life journey, and especially over the last five years of just living on my own, and being single, and just that, that fear of the unknown. And God, what? How am I going to live on my own? How am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to like, what's my life going to look like career wise? I've gone through career changes a few times and, and just ministries and starting new ministries and ending ministries and starting new things and, and just trusting him in the process. And as that deer is like, it felt like slow motion to me. This deer is going across as it's, as Eddie's singing, Abba father always protects me. And I love that in first Corinthians 13, it says that love always protects it always trusts, it always hopes, and it always perseveres. Love never fails. And I was thinking, wow, like if we could get a revelation, a true deep-seated in the pit of our soul revelation of God's love for us, it would change everything. And I feel like for me, the last couple of years, God has really been highlighting different aspects of love um, to me. And like for a while, I was really just meditating on the portion in verse one here, or no, it's not verse one, it's verse six, where it says love rejoices in the truth because we have that, the word love is thrown around so loosely in our culture. And it's like, if you disagree with anyone, then you're being hateful. And I just have anchored this part of verse six in my soul that love rejoices in the truth. If I'm going to say something just to agree with you, even though it's not, even though it's contrary to the word of God and it's contrary to his best for you, then that's not love. Love rejoices in the truth. So whether it hurts or, you know, it offends you right away or whatever, that love rejoices in the truth. So love will speak up. And obviously there's the aspect I love what um, Jamie Lynn Wall now actually taught this on her podcast, which shout out to her. Go follow her on social media. I love her. She was actually a huge inspiration for me starting my podcast. But she was talking about confrontation and how it, it seems like a lot of people either want to like love and never confront or they want to confront without the love and how we really need to have a solid mixture of both to be able to confront people in love. And she's like, if you have a brother or sister in Christ that you need to, or you feel called to like correct or whatever, do not approach them until you have the heart of God first, because otherwise we're just damaging one another. And so I really, I really admire that because there is a need for that. We need to be able to hold each other accountable and all of that. But so I love that, that love rejoices in the truth. And then there's another part in here that God really settled in my heart that love's not self-seeking. And so making sure that all that I'm doing is never done from selfish ambition, selfish motive. And that's, there's a lot of scripture about, about selfishness and that that is a work of the flesh. And uh, Galatians 5, it talks about that. And so 
just always like weighing my own motives and obviously not like putting this pressure on yourself or like, okay, is this, you know, whatever, but like just keeping your heart open to the Lord and allowing him to say, Hey, that's a selfish motive. Don't do that or whatever, because we want all that we do to be done in love. And so that was a big one for me. Um, and then I'm just kind of scanning through the scripture. Keeps no record of wrongs. That was the other one that God really, really settled in my heart about not keeping a record of wrongs against people. And uh, I'm this is not going to be a revelation to anyone listening to this, that the spirit of offense is so running rampant in our culture and everyone's offended about everything. We have like an offense, like I'm offended culture hashtag offended about everything. And I just love that portion where it says love keeps no record of wrongs. And so whether someone has hurt you or whatever, like we are called to forgive and that's not an option. Like, Hey, like maybe you should forgive. It'd be a good idea. I know like the word tells us to forgive. It's not optional. And I think that is so miscommunicated because a lot of times we're like, well, you know, then that basically is saying, you know, stamping my approval on what was done to me. And that is so a lie of the enemy to keep you in bondage because unforgiveness is bondage and it will eat away at you. The word says that bitterness rots the bones. And I have met so many people who I love, <laughs> love dearly, but are so bitter about things that have happened years and years ago. And that's the sad part about unforgiveness is that it shackles you while whoever you're holding it against probably doesn't even remember what was said or done. And, and I'm saying all of this from a place of I have done this too. I have held things against people far longer than I should have. And so really learning to forgive. And I encourage you if you have even as I'm sharing this, someone comes to mind and you're like, mm-hmm, uh, yep, this person would fit in that category for me is just someone who I can't stand even hearing their name. And I'm telling you that I have walked through this because I have had people wound me deeply and just giving that to God. And so I encourage you to take that time with him and ask him, God, do I have anything in me? And the word even says that, like, search me, oh God. Test my heart. Show me, God. And then it says, create a clean heart within me. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. And so just allowing the Lord always for the entirety of your life to have open access to your heart and just to be able to reveal those things to you because it is for your best. It is not to shame you or condemn you for whatever, for decisions or just holding on to things longer than you should have, but really just encouraging you to get into his presence and allow him to reveal those things to you so that you can walk in the fullness of what he has for you, which is freedom. The word says that for freedom, he has set us free. And so he desires for us to have freedom in all areas of our life. And so, yeah, I just, I love the word of God. I love who he is as father and who he's just been revealing himself to me as my provider and my sustainer. And like I said, coming into my season of being single and just really having those questions of like, how am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to whatever? And I will tell you, he is so faithful. He is so faithful. And the word call, the word says that he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. God has so many names. And and you might hear that and be like, well, how, how or why? But it's just like us. Like for me, I'm a sister. I'm an aunt. I'm a teacher. I'm a, all these different things. And I have different titles that mean something different to different, you know, in different scenarios or whatever. But it's the same for God. He's our provider, our sustainer, our healer, and all of those things. And so he has so proven himself faithful to me, and he will continue to. And really, honestly, the whole heart of this message and what even honestly started sparking the the thought of this episode was, can I look at my future with hope? And then I realized, like, if I'm not looking at my future with expectation that God has good things for me, because his word says that, his word says, um, I love the scripture that says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I know that scripture is talking about eternity and heaven and what God is preparing for us in, in that place, in paradise and heaven. But he has so many good things for us now on this side of eternity. And just knowing that he has good things for our future, it says that God withholds no good thing from those who walk uprightly and that he does exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, think, or imagine, and that he works all things together for our good. And so there's so many scriptures that we can just anchor and have hope and confidence in what he has for us in the future. And as I was thinking about that, like, God, if I'm looking toward my future and I'm not feeling hopeful, if I'm not feeling 
Like if I'm having feelings of like a grim reality of what my future might hold, or if I'm not confident that you have good things for my future, then it's because I'm believing a lie about who you are. And that was just honestly on my drive home tonight. I was just kind of working through that in my own spirit. Like, God, if I'm if I'm not confident that you have good things for my life, if I'm not truly confident in that, it's because I'm believing a lie somewhere in in my mind, in my heart, that you are not who you say you are and your word is not what it says. And so God is just dealing with my own heart and that. And I've just asked ask him, like even now, God, reveal to my heart any lies that I'm believing about you because I want to be confident in what your word says. I want to be confident in who you are and confident in what I have in you and that, to know that your plans for me are good because your word says that. And so I pray that over you, if you have just felt just hopeless or just not confident that God has good things in store for your life, that you would just surrender that to him and just spend time with him. I know I said that earlier. Apparently that's the theme on this episode to spend time with him and ask him to show you and to give you that confidence. And even tonight at our event, I was asking God for faith, which is the evidence of things hoped for the substance of things, the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen and just really challenging the women to call things that are not as though they are. Call things that are not as though they are. Those promises that God has given you that you have not seen manifest in the natural. To start praying them. Thanking him now for those things. Thanking him now for what he has for you. And so for me, like I have been believing for a husband. And I know that God has someone incredibly special for me. And maybe someday he'll listen to this episode and be like, that was me. So I've been thanking God. I put a little scripture up in my bathroom out of Proverbs 31 in the Passion Translation, which I love the Passion Translation. And it says, um, the heart of her husband safely trusts her and she brings him the rich spoils of victory. So I will say that, God, I thank you that my husband trusts his heart with me, God, that I bring him the rich spoils of victory. So I'm just praying these scriptures over myself, anything that has to do with the promise that I'm believing for, which for me right now is a spouse. And then um, even just praying like at night, like, God, I thank you for the night for the nights that I won't have to go to bed alone. God, I thank you for my husband. I thank you for what you're calling him to in this season of his life. God, that you are growing him in his faith and that you are filling him with good things. And so just praying those things in faith, even though I don't see anything in the natural, it doesn't matter because God is working even when we don't see it. Like the scripture says that he is working even when we don't see it because he is faithful and there's a timing to things. And I trust that. Um, and I even talked about that even on a, an interview I did a few weeks ago that the right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing. And I trust that to God because I trust his providence. I trust that he sees the big picture even when I only see a few pieces of the puzzle, that he is faithful and that he goes before me and he knows the end from the beginning. And just so, so much about his faithfulness and his character just keep me anchored in the reality that he is good and he is faithful. So, um yeah, just I encourage you to do that, to pray, to stand in faith for what you're believing for, even if you haven't seen it manifest yet. It doesn't matter. He is good and he is faithful. And I was actually at a conference, gosh, it's been a year and a half ago. I was at a Barnstormers conference that Aunt Shelley put on and um, incredible ministry that she has. And <laughs> during worship, it was like the Lord re- just was speaking to my heart. You were believing a lie that I am a promise maker and not a promise keeper. And I was like, that is reality. Lord, you are right. I do believe that because I believe you've you've spoken things over my life and I haven't seen them come to pass. And I'm starting to doubt that maybe, one, maybe I didn't hear you right, or two, just that you make promises that you don't actually fulfill. And guess what? God is so good. You can have real conversation with him and you can talk to him and just be real with him because guess what? He already knows what's on your heart and what you're thinking anyway, so you might as well just be real. And then through that and through communicating with him and spending time in his word and in his presence and having conversation with God. It's one of the beautiful, (laughs) beautifulest. It's one of the most beautiful things about relationship is that you can talk to God, talk things out, allow him to show you where you've been blindsided or what lies you've been fed or whatever. And then he can uproot those things and replace them with truth. And so for me, it was like, I had this revelation that I was believing a lie that he makes promises, but he doesn't follow through. And so for me, I was able to surrender that and just give it to him. And now I don't believe, I'm not believing that. I'm not confessing that over my life. I know that all of his promises will come to pass and that all of his promises are yes and amen. And he is not a man that he should lie, that he keeps every word he says. He is not the, not, um, 
the scripture in Numbers that says he is he is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should change his mind. And so I'm just believing that every promise that he has spoken over my life and over my future will come to pass. And so I pray that for you, that God just continues to do a work in your life because he is so good. And while we are here on this earth, we will never stop growing in our faith and in our knowledge of him and just our understanding of the word and who he is. And so I encourage you, if you've felt like you've been in a funk lately, trust me, I get it. I've been through so many seasons where I have felt that way. Just to stay encouraged and to keep pushing forward, even when it feels like you're just trudging through mud and it feels heavy, to to just keep pushing forward, to keep focusing on him. And even last night, I had just I just gone through a very heavy week. And I won't get into details about all of that, but at least not in this podcast. I don't feel like I'm supposed to share all that, but I, it was just a heavy week for me and, and, la- and it's just been busy. I've been very, very busy. And so I had last evening off, quote unquote off, where I didn't really have anything scheduled. And I'm like, God, even though I don't feel like being in your word, even though I don't feel like putting on worship music, I am doing it. And I am persistently pressing into your presence because I need you. (laughs) And I'm going to be here until the sun comes up if I have to, because I am that desperate to feel you and to be in your presence and just to, to just meet him. And that's how I felt. And so I did, I put on worship music, got in the word and just kept reading and kept reading and kept reading until I felt that heaviness leave me. And his word promises that his yoke is easy and his burden is light and tells us to cast our cares on him. And so For the last few days, he's really been challenging me like, hey, cast your cares on me. I care for you and not feeling like I have to carry the heaviness of whatever I'm going through that he is. He can carry that. And he guess what? He's a lot more capable of it than me. And so I just felt such a release and a lightness come over me last night and just confidence again in his goodness and in his peace. It surpasses all understanding. The word says that I believe in Philippians. Um, It says, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication to make your request known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and rule your minds in Christ Jesus. I think that's in Philippians 3. You can look it up. But anyway, for me, it was like refusing to be anxious and just casting my cares on him by prayer and supplication, making my request known to him. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. And so I did that. And then his peace (laughs) that surpasses all understanding. That means it. All right. I'm going to finish this episode. I'm laughing. I talk with my hands. And I was just like really, really talking with my hands there for a second, and I totally stopped recording. So I was talking about the peace that surpasses on all understanding, and and as I was in prayer, um, that is exactly what happened. I surrendered everything, all the anxiety and all my cares to him, and then his peace that surpasses all understanding, which again just means it doesn't make sense in the natural, doesn't make sense in the natural. It's a supernatural thing. It, it began to just come over me and, and it, it is guarding my heart and ruling my mind in Christ Jesus. So I am going to officially end this episode. I just pray that it ministered to you and whatever God had for you, whatever I shared, um, that he would just do a deep work in that. And um, like I like I like to say this a lot. I don't always say it, but it always stands that if you need prayer or you need to talk about anything, that is why I do this. I don't love just getting on here and talking, although... I have a gift of gab and I enjoy talking. Uh, I don't get on here just to talk, just to talk. I want to be on here to encourage your hearts and to pray with you and and to talk with you. So if you want to reach out to me on social media, please do that. I would love to pray with you and for you. It's honest, It's honestly an honor and a privilege to be able to do that for people. And so I'm going to go ahead and pray and just pray that you are encouraged and that you stay encouraged, stay in the word, stay in his presence because he is so faithful and he is for you. Father God, I thank you so much for who you are. God, I thank you for the revelation of who you are as Father, that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus Christ into this world to die for us, God, to reconcile us to the Father. And God, I thank you that you made a way for us to know you. God, I thank you that when Jesus sacrificed his life, that the veil in the temple was torn into God, and that barrier that stood between man and God was removed. God, I thank you for your sacrifice, that you willingly endured the cross. God, that you lived to intercede for us. God, I thank you, Jesus, that you are seated at the right hand, that your word says that you intercede for us. God, I thank you for your love. God, I pray for a revelation of your love, a deep-seated revelation in my own heart and in the hearts of every person who listens to this episode. I thank you for who you are to us. 
God, you are so faithful. You are so good. You are so kind. You delight in showing mercy and your mercies are new every morning. So I pray right now if there's anyone listening to this episode who is stuck in bondage or shame from their past, God, that you would remove that completely from them. God, that you would give them a new sense of freedom. I pray if anyone that is tuning in is carrying anxiety or fear or insecurity or anything, God, that you have not given them, that, God, those things would be cast away from them, God, and they would be replaced with your truth and what you have for them. God, I pray that you would bless the rest of their day, their week ahead, that you would just give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Continue to give us revelation in your word. God, I thank you for your sweet presence. In Jesus' name, amen. The Just Janice podcast is part of the NRT Podcast Network. To find other great podcasts in the network, visit newreleasetoday.com. Be sure to connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Janice Podcast.